a century after the division of the Korean Peninsula. What does North Korea, the other half of our nation, look like now? An insulationist regime with military first policy. North Korean government is still insisting on communism and authoritarianism. And now, North Korea is gradually moving toward the third generation of hereditary power succession. But what are the lives of North Koreans really like? After the social class system was adopted in the 1960s, people in North Korea have not been free to even choose their jobs. I could enter the People's Army because I was born into the right family background. In North Korea, there's one female soldier for every hundred male soldiers, so it's hard for girls to go into the military. But I could get in because of my family background. If you don't have such a background, you can't even go to college. And it doesn't matter how smart you are or what good grades you have, you'll end up working at farms or mines or construction sites that the government chooses for you. If my grandfather was a fighter for the anti-Japanese revolution, then my father's generation and my generation can go to special schools for party members and even become a party member. It all depends on the family background. Faced with the barrier of family background, the North Korean people can't even dream of climbing the social ladder. In North Korea, chocolates are very rare. I thought I could eat these chocolates because my older brother is a pilot. And once, because my father was the secretary of the party, he came home with a box of tangerines that he received from King Jong-il as a holiday present. Before then, I hadn't even heard of the word tangerine. People who are not from a good family background can't even see these things. Pursuit of happiness is limited to the chosen few who belong to the upper class. In fact, the primary victims of the widespread famine in 1995 were women, who had to search for ways to make a living. They don't allow you to sell things at the marketplace unless you are older than 40. So there were things called grasshopper markets. It was called that because you go around the streets to sell stuff. But when the police comes, you run away. When I was the head of my neighborhood, I had to feed my son and myself. So I sold two packs of cigarettes and a bottle of alcohol every day and lived off the profits. Prostitution is also not uncommon. Because you have to survive. You can sell your body to get a bowl of rice at a restaurant, or a kilogram of noodles, or even cash. You just do everything you can to survive. At the marketplace, officers come around to collect money. But if you don't have any money to give, they tell you to come to their office. And when you go there, you have to let them do whatever they want. In South Korea, sexually abusing children is a serious crime. But in North Korea, it's not. People just let it go by. And when there are incidents of sexual abuse, people don't make a big deal out of them. In order to survive, some women risked their lives to cross the Tumon River, escaping the vigilance of the border patrol. It's really difficult to put your life on the line to escape from North Korea. At first, I escaped with two other people. I could hardly keep my head above the water, but I thought I would die either way, so I just went on. A friend of mine was crossing the Amnok River to get to China, but was shot dead. But the corpse was in the river for more than a month. North Korea didn't want to get rid of it, so it took a month for China to get my friend's corpse out. However, many more women do not succeed in their escapes. Once caught, the women are abused and receive many types of ill treatment. If you get caught by the border patrol, you get beat up, everywhere. Your face, your body. The male officers strip you naked on the spot to see if you brought any money from China and even check your private parts with their hands. In a prison camp, you have to sleep on a cold cement or concrete floor even during the winter. 
There is not even a blanket or a piece of cloth. The guards also torture you, but what's more painful is the lice and bed bugs that come out at night. You can't see those bed bugs, but they get stuck between your fingers and toes and inside your navel. And you can't sleep because you are scratching all the time. That's why everyone in the camp, male or female, has some kind of skin disease. So for a month, my second daughter and I slept like a bat, hanging upside down on a small window. We had to lock our arms around the metal bar to keep ourselves from falling down. It was better to get bit by mosquitoes than by the bed bugs. Illegal abortion is common, not to mention physical abuses against pregnant women. They made me give birth where all the policemen were watching. Then they lay the baby face down right in front of my eyes so that it would die. The baby was crying for two hours. After just one hour, the baby couldn't breathe. So it sounded like, like, the baby barely lived for two hours and did nothing but cry. Korea, even the word human rights sounds unfamiliar. North Korea has a universal educational system from elementary school to high school, but the reality is much different from what people might expect. After taking four classes at school, I went back home to get lunch because there is no cafeteria or no dining services. When I went back to school after lunch, I had to do manual labor. Sometimes I was sent to factories and sometimes I had to carry stones and sands from riverbanks or even water. It depends on the season and in the fall I also helped harvesting. For these children who spend more time doing manual labor than studying, special assignments are the hardest thing in the world. You have to do it. You have to bring animal skins, rubber, copper, or scrap metals for these special assignments. But if you don't, they don't let you go home and send you out again to get it. So some students decide not to go to school in the first place. I was lucky because my grandmother raised rabbits. And so I could bring rabbit skins to school. But for my friends, it was difficult to get them, and they were expensive. So some of my friends were taken to the office by their teachers, where they had to work all day. We were told that because the soldiers are fighting for us, we need to keep them warm during winter by making uniforms out of rabbit skins. Have you heard of Kotjebi? In North Korea, it's a term used to refer to children who beg in the streets, whether their parents are alive or not. Before I became a Kotjebi, I was living with my family. But life was hard. I couldn't eat much. So I felt like I was going out of my mind. But as a Kotjebi, I could earn money and feed myself. So life was actually not as hard as before when I couldn't do anything. It was the only way I could survive. In spring and fall, we spread plastic bags on the ground and slept there. We also used plastic bags as blankets, but we were woken up early in the morning because it got really cold. There are lots of kids who sleep outside, even in the winter. Some kids sleep on a pile of rice stalks after harvest. I did that once, but my body couldn't move in the morning. I thought I was dying, but I was determined to survive. I had many friends who froze to death. When we saw a decent pair of shoes on a dead body, we sometimes took them off and wore them ourselves. 
When the dead body begins to rot, crows really flock around to eat the flesh. These children chose to live on the streets so that they didn't have to starve. Freedom to play and having enough food to eat are their only wishes. Political prison camps were built in the early 1970s according to the instructions from Kim Il-sung that enemies of the class must be exterminated over three generations. Escaping from the political prison camps is almost an impossible feat. At concentration camps, there's a main iron gate with barbed wire, and on both sides, there are two telescopes that supposedly can spot an ant crawling 200 meters away. Then there are two guards. Outside of the camp, there is a trap that has sharp wood sticking out and covered by sand. Even if you don't get caught climbing over the barbed wire, you get stabbed by the wood so that you can't run away. When you go inside a political prison camp, they tell you to never ask what you are guilty of. If you do, you become a traitor and will be executed in public. So you just have to live without knowing why you are imprisoned. I also learned about the charges against me once I was out of the camp. My three siblings are still in the prison camp and they don't know what they are guilty of. Presently, there are six political prison camps in North Korea holding approximately 180,000 detainees. Political prison camps are divided into totally controlled zone for prisoners with life sentence and zone for ideological reformation for families and bachelors. From early dawn to late night, I had to work. My day began when it was dark and ended when it was dark. I woke up at 3.30, ate a little, and went to work at 4.30 by running five kilometers. If I was late three times, I didn't get fed for the entire day. I couldn't even think for a moment because I had to work all the time. By giving us work, they wanted us to turn into slaves and machines and prevent us from having any unnecessary thoughts. So I couldn't think about anything while working. I just worked all day except for one hour they gave us for lunch. Because I had to fill the individual quota, people get beaten up every day and work extra to meet that quota and eventually die. It takes at least three years to get used to that quota, but because the labor is so demanding, political prisoners almost always die within three years. Worse than forced labor are instances of psychological abuse. There were no paved roads, but when the political prisoners were passing by, the high officials would point to us and make us sit on our knees and tell us to open our mouth. Then they spit into our mouth. They threw insults at us, but if we swallowed their spit, we wouldn't get beaten up and they just kicked you to go away. But think about it. If you feel someone else's spit move down your throat and it smells bad, you feel like you have to vomit. Then they will beat you up in every way possible. Is it because we did anything wrong? We didn't. Even when they were violating our human rights, we didn't think that this was a human rights violation. We didn't even know the word human rights. In return for a day of forced labor, the prisoners received nothing but a meal made of corn and salt. When it's raining, they don't allow you to go to the mountain to collect mushrooms and eat them. But there's nothing else to eat and you get hungry. So you eat anything that comes to your eyes. 
When you get wild mushrooms from the mountains, you cook them with some oil and condiments, which doesn't taste bad. But there's only salt in the camp. Sometimes, the entire family dies because of the poison. The rats in North Korea are huge. The rats usually eat what's left over from people's food, but people have nothing to eat, and there is no single corn out in the fields. So the rats don't have anything to eat, and they go crazy and dig up the dead bodies and eat them. Because there are plenty of dead bodies out there, the rats became fat, and the ones in the camp are this big. When you catch just one of those rats, you can fill your stomach. Due to extreme starvation, everyone seems to suffer from diseases. Pilagra, because I couldn't suddenly eat anything in the prison camp, my facial skins began to peel off, and I got dark circles around my eyes like I was wearing sunglasses. My tongue also had cracks in all places. So I couldn't eat anything salty or spicy. There were lots of people who died. When people get caught trying to escape North Korea, they receive severe punishments. Summary trial. Public execution. Before the public execution, they set up a tall wooden post and hang the North Korean flag on the top. Then they beat up the criminal half-dead, drag him by the gag in his mouth, and tie him to the post with his eyes covered. Then they yell, in the name of the people, shoot the anti-revolutionary convict. And three soldiers shoot three shots, three shots, three shots. So nine shots from each soldier. They also yell, if any of you tries to escape, you'll end up like this. It takes only 25 minutes from summary trial to public execution. There are no lawyers and no last defense. The convict's fate is determined by just one word from the judge. The sentence is pronounced, execution. At the command of the judge, soldiers aim their guns. There is no such thing as human rights in political prison camps. I was really stupid. No one could understand my decision to go to North Korea. It was a really stupid decision. Dr. Rowe was studying in Germany in 1985 when a North Korean spy persuaded him to go to North Korea with his family. One year later, while being sent by North Korean authorities to Europe, he escaped from his guards and asked the airport authorities for help. As a punishment, the government imprisoned his wife, Mrs. Suk Cha Shin, and his daughters Haewon and Kyuwon in the Yodok political prison camp. Dad, this is Haewon. I had a dream a few days ago that I spent my birthday with you and I was happy. I respect you, Dad, and I miss you a lot. Please be safe and be healthy. It's been so long that just saying the word Dad makes me cry. Even today, I think that I would rather go back to North Korea to be exchanged. if that means my wife and daughters can finally come to South Korea. I'd like to ask everyone and anyone who believes in human dignity to help my wife and daughters gain their freedom again. Waiting with no end in sight. There are many political prisoners in North Korea whose guilt was established by nothing more than association. North Korean political prison camps are the cruelest place a person can dream of. A living hell 
is such a common word there that it's an understatement. Political prisoners are literally treated worse than dogs. North Korea, a witness to the most inhumane and brutal violations of human rights. At this very moment, the North Korean people are groaning under oppression, having given up their lives as human beings. <laughs> 